Hey guys, it's Nick the Booksmith. Welcome back to my channel. Um, so today I thought I would go through some ideas for perhaps some craft show type projects or maybe you're going to be uh, vacationing or traveling and you need to take along some little gifts with you for the people you're staying with or family things like that. So I was talking recently with a couple of students and who had craft shows in mind and they had committed to these craft shows and they wanted to make some larger items, some more expensive kind of things, but they also wanted some ideas for some quick, inexpensive, grab as you go items for customers to be able to get for, you know, under the $10 range or even lower. And so sometimes that's hard. Those are the big sellers. That's what people want to buy are the quick little inexpensive things that they can grab real quickly. So I'm going to link below this video some of the projects that I have done before that can be adapted and we're going to talk about that. One of them, I don't know if you guys remember this little, this is a TN insert sized day book and I also made a notebook that was more, um, that was larger and it was more like eight and a half by five and a half. So these little notebooks, and this one of course is a, is a little different because I added this little, this little leather closure and some, and some little charms here. Um, I will link that video to where I, I was working on these down below. Um, but you don't have to make like this kind of a closure. It can just be, you can just wrap around some sorry silks or um, just some twine, all kinds of things. You can punch little eyelets and just tie it closed with some ribbon or you don't have to have anything at all. They don't have to have a closure. So these can be transformed into gratitude journals or travel journals or sketchbooks or little planners, that kind of thing. Um, you can sell them as a set with maybe a pen or a pencil that you can decorate or not. Um, a lot of folks like to decorate their pens and pencils, so lots of YouTube videos, I'm sure, on decorated writing utensils. Um, you could also, especially with that larger one that I made, you could turn it into a coloring book for kids and you could have a little mini pack, you know, the little eight pack of crayons to go with it. And it would be like a little travel kit for a kid. Um, there is also, I just did a video not too long ago. For those of you who have Photoshop, um, the link will be again down below and it will show how to take images from, um, clip art images from wherever you find them, whether it's uh, the Graphics Fairy, uh, Old Design Shop, all that kind of stuff. You can get those images that you can use um, for free or with the premium membership site, and you can turn those into coloring book images, perhaps for kids. Okay, so what else? Well, do you guys remember the shabby folio, the thingamabob? Yeah, that those are kind of fun. A little more involved, granted. So those won't wouldn't be ten dollars. Please don't please don't price those ten dollars. It's good take use of time. So those would be a little bit more expensive. And then there's a couple other things that I wanted to adapt, and we'll do that. We'll do that here. I will try not to make this video you know forty years long. So do you remember this little Polaroid style brag book that we made about a month or so ago? Oh, and don't mind the neighbor's lawn mowing company. Like they usually show up at noon and I was busy and I thought, oh, it's 3.30. They must not be coming today. And as soon, as soon as I turn on the camera, there they are. So they will be gone momentarily, I hope, or I will kick them out. Okay, so do you remember this little brag book that we made with the little Polaroid kind of 
you know, pages, and we put our, our family in here. Well, one thing that I thought that we could do, um, I took some, this is just black cardstock. This was craft. Remember, this was craft cardstock that I had cut in half. So this is just black cardstock, and this was eight and a half by 11 sheet that I just, as you can see, I cut in half. I'm gonna stack those on top of each other, and you can make these as many pages as you as you'd like. Um, you could do two pages and stack them together, and then you can you know, and you'd have more. And now I'm going to fold that in half, just like that. I decided to go a little bit different with with black this time. And what I have for you at Flickr again, link down below will be this page of these Polaroid templates. And as you can see, you will be able to cut them out and then there will be a, uh, a square here for the people that want to buy your little mini Polaroid album. They can take some of their photos and crop them or cut them down to a three quarter inch square or I wrote it down I wrote it down and it's like probably not here uh, this is my day this is this this is my day guys this is it are you ready this because this is it so three and a quarter inches is about uh, uh, yeah huh 83 millimeters, does that sound right? So whether it is an 83 millimeter square or a three and a quarter inch square, uh, you can cut these templates out and we will center these on the pages. And you don't have to use these templates at all because all these are, these little guys, all they are, they are four and a half inches this way and three and three quarter inches this way. And then you have your three and a quarter, sorry, here I'm like showing you. <laughs> you have your three and a quarter or 83 millimeter square here. And so you can just cut these out of paper if you want ahead of time. I just thought to make it a little easier on you so that you'd have all the measurements and that kind of thing, I would make a little a little quick template so that you could print these out and cut them out and uh, put together some little mini uh, Polaroid albums really quickly for your customers or your recipients, your gift recipients, to be able to adapt this to their own family. And two of the templates have date and details down here at the bottom. And then I left the other ones plain, just in case you didn't want to use the ones that said date and details, you know. Okay, so. We have these put together. Now, you can either staple your pages together if you'd like, which is super easy and always the way to go if, if you can help it. Or you can take a, an awl and you can poke a hole about an inch from the top and about an inch from the bottom and then one that's kind of in the middle. And then here I have some Baker's twine. And again, get my needle. My needle. Okay. I'm gonna thread that through a large, a large eyed needle. And from the outside, I'm gonna go in through the middle and pull that and leave a tail, go up to the top, 
pull that through, go down to the bottom and go in those set of holes. Pull that through. And then go back through that middle and out that hole in the middle. I like Sue. And you can um, leave your tails as long as you want. Totally up to you, man. And I'm going to put one of the tails on one side of this long stretch like we did before on the other projects. And tighten those up a little bit, but don't pull on them too hard or you'll just rip right through the, the cardstock. That would be bad. And you can tie little knots in the end. Like these. And like these. Where is my bone fold? There it is. Bone folder. Make sure that's nice and okay. So this would be, you know, our cover. And then inside, you can either start here or you could leave this blank. Uh, maybe put a piece of paper here so that they could write what this what this little mini album is about. That's up to you. And then just start putting these in on your pages. And I suggest that if you do use these templates and you print out some of these um, templates to cut out and put in little mini Polaroid albums, that you use a heavier um, paper, whether it's cardstock or presentation brochure type paper, something with a little bit of heft to it and not just regular copy paper. It'll just look nicer. It has a nicer finish to it. So I'm just gonna pop that guy right there in the middle like that. And just one, one sheet of, of this cardstock cut in half and then both pieces folded in half make enough to where you could do one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven pictures if you wanted. So like I said, you could just keep going if you wanted to make it a little bit thicker, maybe add another half a sheet of paper or something. I think that's what we did. I think that's what we did on the, this guy. <laughs> and then we're gonna pretend, we're gonna pretend that these are some photographs that we wanna, you know, we wanna cut down, right? So one thing you could do is you could provide a, a template, a three and a quarter inch square or 83 inch square of um, just a piece of cardstock or something that they could use to cut their picture down so that it would be the perfect size. So this is just a square of paper and they could place this over their picture like this and then just cut around it and then that way they would they would know that they won't cut it too small or way too big and then have to keep cutting it small you know when you when you cut something that's way too big so you oh, I'll just take a sliver off of this side and it's not even anymore and well I'll just take a sliver off of the other side and yeah, it's kind of like brownies. When you try to even up the, the pan of brownies, it never evens up right, so you just eat them all. So that would just get popped right there on that um, square. And like I said, your customers or your gift recipients can use their own photographs, their family photographs, um, vacation pictures, you know, all kinds of stuff to make their own little miniature Polaroid album and they could theme them to trips and different occasions, you know, anniversaries and parties and that kind of thing. And then they have a whole little book full of these super cute um, little Polaroid um, pages. And then they can write the date and the details down there. So on the front, so let's just pretend we filled up the whole thing because that would take forever. 
So let's pretend on the front that we want to maybe decorate a little bit. I don't know. So this is just a piece of uh, Anna Griffith uh, card, uh, card stock. So it's just, you know, scrapbook paper. And you can just put some glue on the back. I just cut it a little bit smaller um, than the cover so that the cover, the black cover kind of framed around this piece a little bit. And so I'm just gonna kinda center that in the middle like this. What a great way to use up a lot of your scraps too. You could even use like ATC cards and that kind of thing. And then I took a kind of a bigger piece of um, tea stained paper and this one is, uh, hold on, I will, I will measure. Like I said, I had all this written down and it's, you know, somewhere in the house. So this is a two and three quarter by about one and a half. So I'm just going to center that on top of there to kind of make like the base for a um, book plate, name plate. And then I took another piece of scrap paper, just a little smaller than this guy, because it's all about the layers. It's all about the layers, folks. And then this one can go kind on top of this one. Like that. And then I took even a littler strip because what I wanted to do with this was, um, I have these little, you guys have seen me use these before, these little um, snap together, you know, word thingies. You know, word thingies, it's a technical term. And I'm just going to stamp story on there. And just put a little glue around the edge. And then this can be like, I don't know, kitty cornered down on the bottom right or something. It doesn't have to be centered or anything. And so you can even leave these blank so that your customers or gift recipients can name this whatever they want. So then they have these sweet little albums. And then on the inside, when you open up, they have these awesome little Polaroid frames to put their own pictures in. Cute, right? So you can get an assembly line of those going and that would not take long at all. Would not cost very much and um, kind of cute, right? So there's one thing you could do. Um, the other thing that I was thinking about doing is making a notebook, but maybe something in a different orientation. So I have some more of this Anna Griffith um, patterned cardstock, and this is mm -mm, four and a half by four and a half by a little bit bigger than five and a half. Because what I wanted was is I took a piece of just standard copy paper and I sliced it in half long ways. And then I'm gonna stack some of these up like this. And I think this was five sheets of paper. So sliced in half, that's 10. I didn't count. And then you just fold them over if they let you. Fold them over. It's, it's better if you fold them all over together. It makes a better um, fold at the end. If you fold them each separately, you'll have staggers at the bottom. So here is your, your little notebook paper. Okay, so there's that. Let's set that aside for now. You could use um, 
sketch paper like they make this they make this sketchbook paper it's kind of a manila vanilla color it's kind of rough it's great for pencil drawings and that kind of thing you could use tea stained paper you know you know whatever you like and then and then where did she put it story of my life oh it's over here okay so then I took a piece of um, just the hanging file folder and I cut it as wide as the um, notebook cover and it is a mm, little bit bigger than an inch and three quarters. Where is my, oh, what a day people. Okay, so it's about 45 millimeters wide and about a 115 millimeters long. And what we want to do is we find, want to find the center of this, no matter, no matter how wide you make your little, um, your little strip here. Let me show you. I'm just going to line it up on my scoreboard so that I know where the exact middle is. And I'm going to leave a quarter inch gap in the middle between two score lines. So I find the middle. So here's my middle is five. So I'm going to go one tick mark to this side. Find five again, go one tick mark to the other side. And then this leaves a quarter inch gap there you go. Can you see that? A quarter inch gap right in the center of that. Okay. And um, now go ahead and grab a pencil and kind of mark, um, I'll put it over here, kind of mark about, I don't know, half an inch to three quarters of an inch in, in the middle of that gap and mark both ends so that there is, you see my little pencil marks? There's one on each side about three quarters of an inch or 20 millimeters in from each side. And I'm gonna grab my trusty crop dial and I'm gonna put it on the largest hole setting which will just about cover that whole middle area. And I'm gonna punch those circles out. And then here are two little eyelets that fit that larger size. So let me put that to the larger size. And I'm gonna fit that through. And then I just put it in here. If anybody has trouble with their um, with their crocodile and getting the eyelets to set properly, just look up the instructions. Either if you kept the box that came with your crocodile, or you can actually look up the um, the instructions because different kinds of eyelets need different kinds of this little this little thing uh, swirls around and there's four different settings. So if you're having trouble, try a different setting down there. That's usually what happens. At least that's what happened to me. So here's what it looks like as of right now. And we can fold on those score lines now. And the eyelets kind of make it a little wonky. So you don't have to like totally, you know, fold it perfectly. Cause do you see how the, the eyelet is a little wide, but that's okay. That's okay. I didn't want it. I didn't want these any wider than that. So I'm going to take my covers that I cut down and I told you what they were in inches but this is 114 by uh, 143 in millimeters and four and a half by five and five eighths in inches. So I'm just gonna tap these two together and I'm going 
to round the edges just because I think it looks nice. You don't have to. Not your mom. And grab your glue. Open this back up. And what you do is put some glue on this side of one of the score lines. You leave that middle quarter inch gap free. You don't want to put glue on that one. Take one of your pieces of cardstock and line that up there and have it just under, just under the score line there, just so that your um, your top will will fold nice and freely. And then on this side, do the same thing. On this side, put a little bit of glue. Your favorite glue will be just fine. And then take the other one and place it on this side of this score line. Make sure they're lined up evenly, front and back. Okay, now this is going to be our front right here and for a um, for a little plate on this one, I cut out another little piece of this file folder and I just rounded the edges and I was, you can either put it up here and put a piece of uh, tea stained paper in there so that your recipient or the customer can um, write something in there or you could make this teeny tiny little skinny one. It could go down here on the bottom. You know, it's up to you, however, however, whatever floats your boater, right? So what we're going to do is take your stack of papers that we sliced in half and folded and fit that right in there. Close down your notebook cover and make sure it's in there side to side pretty evenly and then take a pencil and mark through those eyelets onto the fold of those papers. I like that. And then take your trusty pokey thing and just make sure all your papers are lined up. That's the hardest part. Use a binder clip if, if you need to. And poke holes all the way through. And all the way through. Just like that. And again, I'm going to need that needle, the needle. And I'm going to thread the baker's twine through the end of this big old needle. And you could use, you use all kinds of twine, all kinds, all kinds. And we're just going to put that back in there and I'm going to go through one of these eyelets and then through one of these set of holes and pull that through and then go through the other set of holes and the other eyelet. And you can snug these up and make sure that it is, you know, nice and snug up there. Make sure that your, your twine isn't loose or anything. Turn that sideways and it's not going to rip through because you have eyelets, right? And tie that nice and tight. If you want to tie it in a knot first, not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea. Do you see what I did there? A knot. It's not a bad idea. Okay. And then either you could just leave it as a knot or you could, you know, tie it in a, you know, shoestring tennis shoe bow here. Like this. Super simple, right? 
Super simple. You can tie knots in the bottoms of the of the twine if you want so it doesn't get away from you. Okay, and then we have our little labels. And like I said, you could put one here or you could put one down in kind of like kind of like in it. I don't know, because maybe because we did it the other way on the other one. I don't know. Again, it's just, just some scraps left over from the hanging file and a piece of tea stained paper. So not expensive to make at all. So let's put this little plate down in here. And what I thought these would be really, really cute for, what you could label them, market them as, would be kind of like a little keepsake for like a, you know, letters to my son, letters to my daughter, letters to um, my grandchild, my granddaughter, my, my grandson, um, letters to, even if you have somebody that has already passed and maybe you still have stuff that you want to tell them, this could be, you know, letters to grandma or letters to dad, you know, things that Things that you think about a lot and you're like, oh, I wish I would have said that or mentioned this or told them this story. Well, write it down. Put it down. So these could be cute little letters to notebooks. Letters to dot, dot, dot notebooks. And you open it up and then you have all these pages that you could send a letter, write a note to either future children, um, kids that are little right now that can't even read yet, but you want to give this to them someday, you could make these in increments. You know, this could be, you know, as of when they turned one year old and, you know, when we lived in this house or whatever. And you could write all your notes and then when you get to the end, you flip it over backwards and then you write on the back sides. Clever, right? Clever. Okay, so these could be your letters to notebooks. And if you market them as a, a memory keepsake, a, uh, a letters to grandma or a letters to my son, um, you know, attach some emotion with it. I, I, think, I think they'll do real well. So those were my little ideas for today. I hope you enjoyed these little notebook um, that we made. Super easy, right? Super easy and um, ways to use up your, your scrapbook paper, uh, your scraps of all kinds of things, your tea stain paper, just some inventive little ways to make some little inexpensive either craft show things to sell or gifts for friends and family when you're traveling. You could even put these in like little cellophane bags and marketing is, is huge uh, at a craft show. So always have something out to display. So have a sample out so that they can see what it could be when they use this item. So have a little sample book out so that they can look through this and say, oh, okay, I understand. And so it comes with this little like template that I can crop my own pictures that I ho have at home in a box somewhere. And then I could have these sitting out so people could look at it and you're like, yeah, yeah, that's what, that's the whole point. Um, so, and then, like I said, have all the nice, neat, clean ones in cellophane with a little label or stapled shut so no little grubby hands or, or big grubby hands can get in there and have a little special pen or something to go with it if you, if you want. And um, that always makes a nice connection with people when they can walk by your booth and they don't have to guess what something should be used for. Um, it's kind of like when you sell a house and you have that third bedroom and you don't use it as a third bedroom, but guess what? You take your office stuff out of there and you make it a third bedroom <laughs> because people sometimes shopping for houses think, oh, well, it's an office. It's not big enough for a bed. Well, it was big enough for a bed. It was just fine when little Johnny was with us, you know, um, before he went off to college or got married or whatever it was. So that's kind of like with craft show ideas always have little samples out 
um, have little labels like this one. It could be letters to dot, dot, dot. And then you could have a list of, you know, son, daughter, mom, grandchild, and then have one where you write something in it. And it could be a collection of poetry that you like, um, maybe glue some little pictures inside, you know, some, you know, cut some little pictures down of your own family and put them inside and write little notes and so they can see uh, how you envision this product to be used. So have I talked enough? Is that, is, how long is this video? Forever. It's forever. Um, so thank you for um, playing with me today and making some little craft show or traveling gifty thing ideas. And I, I hope you enjoyed this, this quick little video. Um, I am almost finished with the editing of the new book course. I wanted to add some other things, so I had to film some more stuff and, and add it in um, that I wanted to add in. So that should be that should be coming up next week. Um, I should be able to get that edited and get the templates made and get it uploaded because man, uploading takes forever. When you have to upload like a billion video segments. It takes forever. Um, my internet's not that great. We don't have fiber optic here, which is so sad. Um, so yeah, so there's that. And I also have a stack of journals that will be going up for sale um, also very soon within that next, that next week time period. Um, and then Friday, I will be at the um, Scrapbook Expo in Denver. So if you're there, come find me. I will have some gummy bears for you or something. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. I guess that's it. If you follow me on Instagram, I will put the link down below. Um, even if you aren't going to be in Denver at the Scrapbook Expo, I will, um, I will shoot some pictures and, and put some stuff on Instagram so you can see what it looks like if you've never been to one, right? And then maybe I'll be able to film while I'm there and then do a little update. And maybe if I buy anything, I'll do a little um, scrap expo haul when I, you know, when I'm done. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me today. And thanks to all the new subscribers that have come along. Hi guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. And all of you that have been with me from the beginning, you are my heart. Okay guys, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.